I've got to say that a bachelor's degree in food science is one of those college degrees that is super flexible and can lead to a whole ton of different career paths. Now, is that a slightly biased opinion? Probably because I have a bachelor's degree and a PhD in food science. But to prove it to you, here are seven more careers that a degree in food science can open a door to. And if you missed it, in another video, I talked about the six most common jobs a food scientist gets. So here's seven more. And if you missed that first video, you can find the link in the description. Sustainability. This area of jobs is only growing for food scientists. I see more and more opportunities each and every year because our food system is huge, right? It's trying to feed billions of people each year. And how can we best do this without compromising how future generations are able to eat and grow their food? Over the years, I've seen more and more students specialize in sustainability and more job openings at very large and well-known food companies looking for food scientists who are specialized in sustainability. In these types of roles, you're usually responsible for developing your company's sustainability goals and then helping the company achieve those. And this could be a number of things, but maybe that's uh, reducing your greenhouse gas emission usage, uh, moving towards renewable energy, or uh, even limiting uh, the amount of waste you generate. You would be involved in innovation decisions like where and what ingredients should we source? Where are they grown? Are there good practices? Are there good environmental practices or social practices? You would assess the supply chain or the partners you work with to make sure they're doing the best sustainable current practices. These people also work very, very closely with the manufacturing facility to make sure that the food the company is producing, it's uh, making sure to limit water use, making sure to limit energy usage, uh, what is going to happen with the waste, can you have a zero food waste policy? So you are in charge of making sure everything in that company is following a sustainable practice. And like I mentioned earlier, I really think this area, it is only growing right now as more companies focus on sustainability. And just a quick side note here, if you want to learn more details about any of these careers, each of them is actually an individual chapter in my book about careers in food science. I'll put the link in the description. I know it might seem weird that a degree in food science could lead you into sales, but this is 100% true and I know several food scientists who are actually in technical sales. And this is because many ingredient companies, so they don't make the final food product, they just make components of the food or ingredients, they need salespeople that have a background in food science so that they understand what is the ingredient made of or how should it be used in certain applications how much should be used that sort of thing they need food scientists to be salespeople to sell these ingredients to the food companies that actually make the final product these people are definitely a mixture of part salesperson but also part expert in whatever ingredients you're selling that could be fats and oils, or maybe you sell thickeners and hydrocolloids, and your customers are going to call you and expect you to know the answer when maybe they don't know how much of the ingredient to put in a cake or to put in a pudding. They might say it's not processing quite right. It's not uh, thickening up, um, it's burning, right? And you are the person that has to know the ingredients well enough, know those scientific details well enough to really troubleshoot for your customers as problems are popping up. And in my experience, these people really make bank because they're salespeople. So you typically get a very big bonus at the end of the year and also make more money on commissions. Let's talk about production management because I think this is a role that really gets looked over by a lot of food scientists. And this is perfect for people who like to be a very hands-on and they don't want the same thing to happen every day. You want you know, to be doing something new every single day. In a food manufacturing facility, there's a supervisor or a production manager that is sort of the overseer of the process from like mixing the ingredients all the way to making that like finished product. And this person is usually like totally in charge of the whole manufacturing line. Now you might be thinking like, isn't this production line very automated and aren't there machines? 
Well, there are, but there's also a lot of humans that run the machines and very often things tend to go wrong or break down. As the manager, you really need to understand what's the function of each ingredient, how do they mix together, how do they flow from one step of the process to another to make that final product, and how can we change or adjust those steps when different things happen like, oh, maybe too much water was added or we needed to substitute an ingredient. How do we need to change the production process to make the same product, the same food in the end? This is what I meant when I said no day will be the same in this role because, you know, one day maybe the electricity goes out, the next day a different machine breaks down, the next day someone put in a wrong ingredient, right? It's like every day is super different, but to be successful in these roles, I will say you have to be really hands-on and you have to be able to problem solve like very creatively, like in the moment, very flexible and, and you know, can adapt easily. And the friends or students that I've had that are in these type of production roles, they say it's extremely fulfilling because every day, sure, there are the hiccups or problems, but every day you go home from work and you've literally made like tons and tons of food that your family and friends eat. Startup. So I have noticed more and more of my students and actually a couple of my friends have gone the startup route instead of going to an established or traditional food company. These startups are looking for flexible and scrappy food scientists because you'll have to work outside of the job description, right? You're building something from the ground up so you have to be willing to do a little bit of everything and that could be cleaning up spills or a mess to ordering new ingredients to creating new formulations. You'll be wearing many, many different hats at these startups. Did you know that many food scientists end up working for the state or national government? Usually they help with food regulations, either creating new food laws or updating the old ones. In the US, it's mainly the FDA or the USDA that hire food scientists to make sure that all the food companies are complying with different government regulations. And the responsibilities uh, food scientists have in these roles can be quite different. So some will look at preventing foodborne illness like widespread outbreaks. Others will go into manufacturing plants and inspect them and make sure everything is sort of up to snuff. And there's also roles that make sure adulterated or like illegitimate foods don't make it to the market. Although all these roles are within the government, there's actually a lot of diverse and exciting opportunities. Like no matter what your interests are, if you're more interested in food microbiology or processing or engineering, there's really, you could find something that you're passionate about. All right. Let's talk about careers in food traceability. And this, I would say, is a relatively new area and definitely still developing. Now, when I say traceability, I just mean how do you track a food from its origin, say at like a farm or wherever it's grown? How do you track it through its entire supply chain as it's being processed or packaged and shipped? to the final result, the final food, and the consumer's home. This is traceability. Can you track it at each and every step? And for some foods, this is an incredibly complex system. Like take something like Mexican sugar cane, which is a raw ingredient. It has to be processed, can be processed into different ingredients like uh, cane sugar, table sugar, brown sugar, you know, like various different ingredients. And then those ingredients are sold and made into different candies. It could be fudge or mints or caramel. So what I'm trying to say is traceability becomes really, really important, but it's difficult because it's sort of like a group project, which I absolutely always dreaded because I knew I would do all the work. So if, you know, one company on that supply train doesn't track that sugarcane, right? The whole thing is kind of null and void because you lost track of it at that one step and now we don't know where it's ended up. So traceability is becoming more and more important. One, to prevent these like widespread food outbreaks or if there is an outbreak, you can really easily track down what food is making people sick and where exactly did that food and that ingredients go. That way we can have a very like easy recall. We know exactly what is making us sick and we know exactly where that food is located. But I think traceability uh, for food is also becoming more important because consumers 
want more and more transparency with the food they eat. They want to know where it was grown, what farm it was grown on. Did it come from the U.S., some other country? How far was that, you know, food shipped or for how long has it been transported? And for this reason, I think experts in traceability, we're seeing more and more opportunities, including a lot of opportunities at food companies. Working for special interest groups. So I think this is actually jobs that many food scientists don't consider until an opportunity sort of pops in front of them. First, what the heck is a special interest group? I just mean this is a organization that advocates for a specific cause or a specific industry. These groups are just made up of the different companies in that food sector, the retailers, the ingredient suppliers, the processing plants, say anyone that has interest in the frozen food sector, they're all in the American Frozen Food Institute. A food scientist that works for one of these groups, one of their main job responsibilities is working with Congress or working with the government to make sure what the companies want or need or their interests are being heard, especially when it comes to changing food regulations and food laws. Because of this, most of these positions in the U.S. will be located in Washington, D.C., just because you work so closely with the government. But these roles also have a whole slew of other responsibilities, which usually includes looking at what research should be funded. You have to keep, you know, up to date on different trends or different statistics for your certain food sector. I'm sure you're responsible for writing a lot of communications to the different companies in your group. So keeping them up to date on what's happening and doing any activities to sort of promote that food sector. So basically it boils down to you're a food scientist that represents the interests of that group of companies, of that special interest group. If you would like to learn more about careers in food science, next I would watch my video that explains the three different sections of the food industry.